This is exactly right. Hi. Welcome. Hello and welcome. It's the mini sode. The mini sode of the My Favorite Murder podcast. That's that podcast you listen to. Where you're listening to right now. It's a short version where we read your stories of your hometown murders and also a bevy of any other things we find interesting. Madness. Mayhem. Uh, grandparents. Grandparents. We love a grandparents story. <laughs> That's it. You want to go first or want me to go first? I love to go first. You do. Let's do it. It's a control issue. <laughs> uh, the subject line of this is my roomie, the Mooney. Okay. <clears throat> awesome. Fun. <clears throat> Hello, Stephen, Karen, Georgia, and assorted pets. Great. Uh, I was listening to one of the old minisodes and I heard you guys mention the Moonies. My first college roommate and her family were and are Moonies or unificationists as they preferred to be referred to. Uh, it's like a religion. Uh, it's like a culty religion. Thing. It's a fucking straight up cult. Okay, great. But I think I that when you're that. in it, you're like, this is my religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, I, and if you, okay, I actually <laughs> learned a lot about the church the first couple of years of college, 2013 to 2015. So this is recent. Yeah. Um, because she was and still is one of my closest friends. Her parents got married because they were personally, quote unquote, matched together mm. by the Reverend Sung Young Moon. Her dad was Jewish, but ended up converting to unificationism. Must have been one of those spaghetti dinners, LOL. <laughs> uh, I remember that. And his parents regularly sent people to try to unbrainwash him for the first couple of years, but to no avail. I'm pretty sure they ended up disowning him. Mm. One of the big things in the church is that unmarried people were not allowed to date, but instead had to engage in a, quote, matching process. Mm. This meant you had to decide you wanted to get married and your parents, the church, would work together to find someone who also wanted to get married and they would quote unquote match you and the two of Kinda you would quote great. unquote date. I know it really does. The two of you would date and with the expectation that you would get married within a year or so. I mean, shit, dude. Like half the fucking ladies I know are like, sign me the fuck and I'll eat spaghetti and get matched with someone. That's all I have to do. That's all I have to do. But here's the thing. That's all you want is your friends to like the best dating option is someone saying, I have a friend you're really going to like. Yes. And not enough people fucking do that. Everyone get on that. It's all I do. I'm always wrong. That's true. But you try a lot. I try hard. You try with old, uh, uh, old Miss Havisham over here. <laughs> <laughs> where George is always like, now, have you ever thought about what this? How? Where I'm like, I don't think of anything Or I'll be like, anymore. tell me your perfect person. And they'll be like, who do I know that's like that? Yeah. No, I'm there. She also likes to run scenarios if I do have a crush on somebody and I'll just say a dumb thing. Oh. Then she'll be like, here's what, what we're would gonna happen do. if he walked in? Uh, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a party. And then when he walks by, I'm going <laughs> to shove you really hard. You're going to clonk heads with him. Which at first, here's my problem. When we start to do that, I laugh and think it's funny. And then when the party starts, right. I begin a slow. Yes. terrible panic and end up in the furthest back corner and I That's won't right. move. And you can feel the heat coming off of Karen because of her embarrassment it's, when you mention it. Oh my God, it's the best. I can't. I don't understand how people flirt genuinely and earnestly with other people. I've never dated someone that I haven't like hit on when I met them cold turkey. I'm going to have to take your class. You just got to be, you got to act like pretend you have to like conjure someone I conjured my mom because she's a fucking slutty flirt. I love Janet. And I'm just like, what's up? I'm hot and you know it. <laughs> like, let's talk. What? You have to do it. You have to conjure someone you know. <laughs> I just, the idea of it, I get, because as we said a million times, my flirting technique is furrow my brows yeah. and act like either I didn't hear what they said to me or I didn't like what they said to me yeah. and turn around. Yeah, let's walk away. I'm from the 90s. I it's bet very it works. unfair. I bet so many guys have crushes on you because of that. The problem is whether it works or not, I'll never know. <laughs> right. I'll never fucking know. Vince and I, when I've been, I fucking walked into our friend Megan Gans's birthday party across the room. Shout out Megan Gans. Megan she Gans? also loves Endeavor. She's the best. Walked across the room, saw a fucking tall dude in a fucking uh, Ben Sherman shirt and was like, I'm going to talk to that motherfucker tonight. <laughs> he and I made eye contact. He doesn't remember. And that, but he came over later and was like, hi, I'm Vince. And we just fucking hit it off immediately like you so you just, were you were giving the old janet eye oh, across the room so uh, then he yes. knew to come over he, yes yes and then he saw me talking to our friends and was like came over 
Yeah. You gotta. And then when you shake hands, you just like give it this little, little this like batty eyelash. You're fucking Jessica Rabbit. You're Jessica Rabbit. No, I am. That's not. who you're conjuring. Oh, okay, God. sorry. Cut all of this out. I love it. No, no, no. I love it, but I'm also now I'm sweating. I can feel your heat. There I'm you so. You know what it just is? Just pretend you're someone else for a minute. It's true. You know what? If I could wear sunglasses at night, I would do it. <laughs> Girl, they're called bangs and they work just as well. Here's the thing. You know what worked great for me huh. for so long? Your giant tits. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> No. When Georgia just said your giant tits to me, she also looked at me the way she was talking about looking at someone. You gave me a little downward eye. I, I looked at your tits. I'm sorry. It worked. I've had three wines. Listen. <laughs> Look. We can listen. I'll do both. Okay. This is turning into it. <laughs> that makes me laugh so hard because being being a blackout drunk for all the time where I should have been practicing all stuff like this, I think I was doing stuff like that. You I just practicing. don't remember. Yeah, great. That's like better because remembering it the next day is a horror right. show. So <laughs> you already did it. You're already there. You're practiced. Yeah. Listen, you're Zsa Zsa Gabor. <laughs> Darling. And then I slap, <laughs> slap them across, them the, across face. the face. I'm going to start slapping cops and see if that works for Do me. It. Okay, sorry. Go on. We're in the middle of an email right I now. I mean, this okay. is being recorded. I love that this is being recorded and distributed steven you do send these out right okay thank you <laughs> so what if okay go ahead. steven's <laughs> okay. our caretaker go on we ended with the idea that basically you tell the head of your cult that you would also like to be married okay, like great. your 1000 friends match ma so basically so it all this other person would like to be married you meet and my point was imagine the moment of like having to walk through that door where you're looking at this person and any impression you have you're also like and i have to marry this person so yeah it's not even like just go and have coffee it's no big deal yeah you have to marry them yeah it's very high stakes very exciting pass so next time you you are in a bar be like well at least i don't have to marry this person i can go talk to whoever i want and i never have to speak to them again it's not like it's the moonies that's what that's what it is mm -hmm. there's it's no like it's the fucking moonies. stakes there's no stakes thank you okay. georgia you're welcome i'm good at this then you okay so then you had to go to a special mass ceremony. I've seen these on TV. Mm -hmm. In the 80s, they used to show it on the news like every six months. Right. It'd be like, the Reverend Moon had a yeah. ceremony for this unification church. And it was a huge room with literally a thousand or two thousand people all wearing the same shit, all getting married at the same time. Romantic. So insane. So romantic. I mean, romantic. Um, so then you'd have the mass ceremony to get married within the church, but afterward, you'd have to get a marriage license and get married in a courthouse to get those sweet, sweet tax oh, breaks. Oh, because it wasn't legal. Okay. Well, it wasn't necessarily real until got it, got it, got it. they got their certificate. Sure, sure, sure. They still had to do the, ba the government work is what mm. this person was saying. Both my roommate and another one of her siblings were involved with something called Generation Peace Academy after, after high school. Good band name. <laughs> oh, my God. Right? Yes. Basically, they spent a year traveling around the country and raising money for the church, which is which means they were raising money so that Reverend Moon could buy guns and ammo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the magazine? And... and <laughs> <laughs> And lived out of cars and had to learn to survive camping out in the wilderness. Pass. Hard pass. Fun. You and lost me. Marry a stranger. Yeah. I never knew all the fucked up shit that happened with the Moonies. I experienced them as regular people whose Christianity was just a little weirder than what I grew up with. <laughs> That's really open. Yeah, it's true. My former roommate. Well, because I bet she, her roommate was cool. And yeah, she yeah, liked her. Totally. My former roommate and her siblings no longer believe in the teachings of Reverend Moon. But like her good sons and daughters pretend to for their parents. Oh, you don't have, don't do that. Uh, though none of them are planning on getting matched. LOL. Stay sexy. And sometimes you can't call your dad because he's in the cult too. <laughs> hey, amazing ending. Like that was a great bring back around. That was a profesh letter. That was great. Thank you so much. Letter K. Okay. I want to read this one because it's a corrections corner from a, uh, hometown. Oh, great. And I really appreciate this is back from Beck. And I really appreciate Beck putting herself out here, out there and here and everywhere for, for us. us. And like, it's a safe fucking space. You can, you can be wrong. We're all, we always are. Please. This is called, Oh shit. Detective dad was wrong about the dingo. Oh, okay. Karen, Karen and Georgia, all caps, exclamation mark. It's me, the daughter of the dingo ate my baby detective. 
Yeah. So remember two yep. episodes ago, I did the dingo baby, and I was like, so, there was even a ha- like how it was so divided in Australia whether the dingo did it or the mother did it, um, and even the head of the detectives like daughter wrote it, and I was like, we all know wink wink that she did it, and I right. was like, and nobody knew. Well, this is fucking. This is her writing us. Great. She says it's me. I'd like to apologize for perpetuating the bullshit quote Lindy did it theory. I had no idea how wrong it was because I've always been scared to look into it because since I was a kid, the whole family had has been banned from talking about the case. Yeah. My brothers were sent to their rooms for asking too many questions. <gasps> Love you, brothers. And we promptly left a few dinner parties when a drunk aunt finally sipped enough courage to broach the subject. <laughs> Auntie Georgia, what's up? Hey, what's up? Uh, whenever someone brought it up, my dad would coldly say, I did better work elsewhere and nothing else. Oh. I always assumed my dad just thought that Lindy did it and didn't want to be questioned. And being the scary, quiet father figure, I, I, sh- I sure as shit did not want to question him on it. Now Absolutely. That, now that you guys have opened that door to that, to that information, and then parentheses, and him being mostly deaf and, una- and unable to listen to this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> I realized that we were probably not, well, we were probably not allowed to talk about it because dad knew he really fucked up, but instead of admitting it, he just inflicted a cone of silence on the family for over 30 years. Go dad. Yeah. She wrote that. I didn't say that. But I support it. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's very crazy to think the old man that enthusiastically play, enthusiastically plays peekaboo with my one-year-old nephew was doing some real shady shit in the 80s. Everybody was. I mean, thank you for all that you do and also for teaching me that you never stop learning your parents are flawed humans. <laughs> SSDGM Beck. And I just want to say how fucking impressed I am that you can, like, admitting that you fucked up and making light of it and being okay with it and wanting to learn more is the fucking most powerful thing you can do as a human being. It's the only thing you're supposed to be doing on the planet. And it's the way you make connections with other people. That's right. And listen, it's a hard thing to do when your parental imprinting has been don't look at anything you may have done and never talk about it. So like, I get that idea of just going, we know what the real story is. And hopefully she didn't feel attacked or called out or anything because that wasn't what we were trying to do it's just almost like i didn't know i didn't know either way and so and there's no reason she should have been like questioning it from the beginning you know no and it's the thing of like you know what's real like one of the hardest things in life and this happens earlier for some of us than others is realizing your parents are human beings that have biases that have biases and flaws yes it's really hard and no one wants to question it or admit it because it kind of shakes your entire foundation yes at whatever age you're at. Also, I think we've talked about this and it, I think everybody that's in a true crime knows this already, but the police have such a shitty fucking job yeah. because basically they have to be hitting three pointers the entire yeah, time yeah. under incredibly high pressure. And if like, and if they get into a thing where they're, they get led down the primrose path of like, oh, we heard their seventh day Adventist. And nobody knows yeah. about that. And that is associated with the devil. And everyone wants this, everyone wants this solved immediately and the quickest it can be done. And we need to prove that, that we're taking care of our community. Like, let's just, you know. Yeah. Every, you're just making the call that at that point you can make. Yeah. You're doing the thing you can do. Yeah. Like when police coerce a confession, they're not trying to just solve the case and get a confession. They think that the person who's confessing actually did it and they're getting a confession out of them because they're doing their hardest. They don't see it the same. I mean, whatever. Yeah. It's just. Yeah, we get it. Yeah. And way Thank to you, go, Beck. Beck. And it also makes me feel good that we've created this community where saying something like this is a safe space. And that's, I think it's, it's re- supported and celebrated. Yeah. And I think it's really <laughs> being wrong is okay here. <laughs> and so I appreciate her being part of that. It's, it means a lot to me. I'm so into being wrong. I do it all the time. <laughs> I do it just so I can admit it later. <laughs> okay. So the subject line of this one is found in the wall. These oh, never get old for ama- me. Amazing. Go. Hi, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, felines and canines. Great. Oh, that's the first one of that. Mm-hmm. Never really thought about the fact that it kind of rhymes. First of all, I love the podcast. Second uh-huh. of all, I once found some fucked up shit in the wall of an old house. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Several years ago, my dad was buying old Victorian houses and fixing them <gasps> up and flipping them. Yes. Cool, dad. So cool. You know, before the whole housing bubble burst. Oh. Yes, I do know about that. Got it. 
Oh, I was underwater in my own home. (laughs) Uh, One house he bought needed a bad gut job. The dining room was covered in this wonderful 1970s wood paneling. Uh, and every bedroom had a different, incredibly ostentatious wallpaper. Ugh, my dream. Uh, please show me 17 pictures of that. I love wallpaper. I love wallpaper. I love it. Uh, do you remember the store Wallpapers to Go? Oh, my God. In yes. In the 80s, 70s, 80s. And yes. you could go down there and they just had a, it was like a store was filled a, with wallpapers on the wall. drive-through. It was to go. You'd order it to go. <laughs> no, but I do. And wallpaper is making a comeback. The secret is... You get a really tacky, crazy wallpaper, but you only wallpaper one wall with it, and yep. you paint the rest of the walls like a light, you know, complementary color. Yeah. Everyone. And it becomes your fascinator wall. Follow my design blog. <laughs> it's called <laughs> Wallpapers to Go. <laughs> By Georgia. By Georgia. Um, the room I was living in was covered in gigantic blue and lime green flowers. 100% on board. Hard to sleep. <laughs> While pulling down little, the wood panel, it's aggressive. Yeah, it's like zzz. yeah, yeah. It's like when I, we all, my sister and I, got to pick our paint wall color. Yeah, um, when we were in the house where I heard the dog outside my bedroom window, mm-hmm. uh, I wanted it to be kind of a nice moss, a light moss green. Mm-hmm. It was fucking neon lime green. Oh shit! To the point where I feel like you know they do those studies where if you paint the walls yeah. certain color, it has psychological effects. Yeah, I am one thousand percent sure that it made my experience as a 12 to 14 year old much more painful than it needed to be zap that brain of yours okay back to whatever this show is (laughs) (laughs) okay he's pulling down the fucking while pulling down the wood paneling in the dining room we discovered a hole in the wall Uh my dad comments that it was so lazy of the previous owners to just put paneling over a hole in the drywall instead of repairing it Mm. but i looked inside (gasps) the hole and it and found a very old manila envelope (gasps) it wasn't a million dollars inside but it was two very old eight millimeter (gasps) film rule rolls Reels, sorry, unmarked. Naturally, I assumed it was a snuff film. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Wouldn't we all? So I called a friend that worked at a video production company and asked him what to do with these film reels. Bring them down immediately. I have to know what's on them, he tells me. Love you. Love you. So the next day, I drove to his studio and and cleaned the film with cotton and baby oil, trying to restore them. I think it was supposed to be he cleaned, whatever. My friend told me we'd only get one viewing out of them because the film was so deteriorated. Oh, my God. So I call a few more buddies and we had a screening party. What was on the film? They're all dead now. What? You want to do a guess? What was on the film? Snuff film. Oh, you think it was a snuff film? Yeah. Steven, what do you think was on this film? Mustache Uh, porn? just, Just childhood memories? No, it was homemade porn. Oh! From the 1960s. Holy shit. Judging by the woman's plastic and unmovable gigantic hair and the man's... That's not what I thought you were saying. (laughs) Uh, And the man's impressive mustache. (gasps) And the room they were in had gigantic... No. Floral wallpaper, (gasps) my bedroom. (laughs) Uh, Amazing. So good. Freaked out, I returned home and talked to the elderly woman who lived across the street. She'd been in her house for about 40 years at that point, And I asked her if she remembers the people I described from the film. Uh-huh. And, she, you know, they had a giant bush. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know oh, her. Yeah. Oh, sure. She had a giant bush. <laughs> God, that thing was big. Um, I uh, she said that in the late 60s, there was a pastor from the local <gasps> church who lived there. Oh, really? But he wasn't married. So who was the mystery woman? I still have the film reels, but they're so badly damaged. <sighs> they can't really be viewed anymore. Anyway, SSDGM and always watch mystery films found in walls. Yeah. Annie. Annie. Fuck Annie. Amazing. That was everything we need it to be. I think I would prefer. I mean, obviously, finding money is great. Bloody blah. <laughs> I think finding two film reels would make me go insane the thing of we'll only be able to watch this once is almost it's like a it's like from a movie where you're like come on it's not a thing so everybody get down here call everybody yeah 
yeah. and then it's exactly what you'd want it to be, which is fucking homemade vintage porn. Homemade porn. And if only that pastor knew that in 40 years, homemade porn would be a celebrated Huge. piece of the internet. Huge. That everybody vintage participated porn? on. Everyone loves it. It's like not even real porn. I love it. Ugh. With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Go by. All right. Uh, I'm going to skip to this one because uh, so we're doing unboxing videos for the fan cult where we basically open uh, presents that are sent to us from our fucking incredible, awesome, talented, um, sometimes insane listeners like you <laughs> listener. And so this is from the one that's getting put up this week. <gasps> that blew our fucking mind. It's it's going up. Or no, it's, it's already. It went it up just Friday. went up. Okay, yeah. so it went up Friday. Today's Monday, um, and so this is the letter that accompanied it. Hello, all. I am so thrilled to gift you my dad's original dare kit from 1994. <laughs> and this harkens back to when I fucking told Karen about going to an estate sale, and on their website, one of the photos from the estate sale was the dare. Uh, or like the drug kit that the cops would bring to the elementary school to show you all the dangers and crazy, scary drugs you could do in like this briefcase. This fucking chick sent hers to our sent us. It. We have touched it. Oh, it we have like, looked at lives it. Lives in my apartment. Yep. Um, he was a dare officer for 18 years and a cop for 26 years. Shout out to Officer Pete. It was collecting dust in his garage since he has now retired at the ripe age of 52. Goals. Am I right? <laughs> Um, so basically her dad let her send this to us as a gift. <laughs> Thank you. We, uh, been, uh, fucking Stephen walked in and, uh, had like the packages from the PO box and uh, looked at us and like, you just like, hi, how are you? Hugs, whatever. And he was like, you're Georgia. You're going to lose your fucking mind. Like he didn't even say hi. <laughs> Stephen said the F word. Oh, I swear. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, when it came, I was like, I can't, it's like burning a hole in my pocket. Yeah. I just wanted yeah. to see it too, you know? And I, and we went all, we were like, let's record. Like, that was our first, uh, no makeup recording. Cause I was like, just need to open this. We gotta do this. Yeah. So first, I wanted to thank you for creating this Murderino community and for saving me from, um, hours of boredom at my desk job. Secondly, here's a short hometown for you. My above mentioned dad was the dare officer for a girl named Christina Long in Danbury, Connecticut. In 2002, she was in middle school, and he said she seemed like a really happy kid. Unfortunately, she didn't have the greatest home life, and that was around the time MySpace was getting popular. Oh, no. She used to meet up with a man later identified as Saul Dos Reyes. The police said that they had a few sexual encounters before the night where, she, where he killed her. Ugh. She had been missing and the only and they only found the body after he confessed. But this case made national news because it was the first time that the Internet had been used to meet someone that resulted in their death. Wow. Oh, my God. Lastly, my dad was also the one who started the tr my true crime obsession. I can clearly remember being in line at the grocery store at about 11 or 12 and seeing a who killed Jean Benet people magazine cover. I turned to my dad and said, do you know who killed her? And he looked at me and said, yeah, everyone knows the brother did it. 
Whoa. <laughs> it was just like Karen's John Wayne Gacy bodies in the book experience. I had never even, it had never even occurred to me that people kill within their own families. I needed to know everything. Oh, and also he told me that they actually still study the ransom note to show cops what deception looks like. Wow. Things like the spacing, the amount of money that was asked for, and the fact that it sounded like it was being dictated, which I've never thought about that, Mm -hmm. means it was fake as fuck. My dad said he would be happy to call in to go over the dare kit and talk about police stuff with you guys, (laughs) which I never, like, I just read this right now. I'm kind of scared for you guys to do that because I know he will say something embarrassing about me. (laughs) Fucking amen, girl. P.S. Due to a bad fall off a horse in December 2017, New Year's actually, I had to have major spinal fusion surgery and was in the hospital for a week and had to lay flat in bed for another three months after. Yeah. Your podcast absolutely was my escape and savior. Cannot thank you enough. The moment I was conscious after surgery, I told my mom that I was not missing your live show and I'm happy to say that I made it to your Phoenix show whoa that's where i live now with my mom back brace and walker all in tow wow sstgm thea pronounced fee uh <laughs> and then it says stop here don't read my contact info aloud but please feel free to reach out <laughs> and then she put her <laughs> thea thea i mean the the this is something i will carry with me for the rest of my life this is a straight fuck this drug kit is a straight fucking in a fire grab your shit not just because it's something I've always wanted, but because you're, you asked your dad, who's this fucking <laughs> probably celebrated cop, to give it to a stranger, and he said yes, and you did it, and I promise you it's in good hands. Oh, yeah. And, I and Steven will fucking take care of it. It's for the never rest of our been lives. in better hands. Pretty sure one of the fucking pills that they show is a Pez. And another's a vitamin, and that just brings me so much joy. And one of them, for uh, all the oldies out there like me, one of them looks exactly like a contact cold medicine pill, <laughs> where it's it's like red, it's like a one right. of those things, and it has tiny beads inside, yes. multicolored beads. And where it's I was like, just like this, the action, you know, it just like explodes. Like, yeah, and thing. I was just like, that's a cold pill. Yeah. But yeah, tell us it's uppers, downers, or bennies, or black beauties, and or we'll, whatever. We'll want to do them all. Yes. Please. Um, thank you, Thea. Like, yeah, that was great. I'm, I'm, I can't tell you how much this podcast means to me that someone would send that to us. Like, that's just, it's a dream. It's amazing. Yeah. And so fun. And guess what else is amazing? This, it, it, again, we keep getting to tell you cool, exciting announcements and surprises. Right. And this one is very cool because we get, we're, uh, get to basically, we're working with Sony Pictures on an upcoming film that is going to come out. And uh, we're going to talk about that. But um, to do that, we're going to dedicate a mini so to it. So we're going to, for you, we were going to ask the, from you to send us your stories of the reveal of somebody that you know that had a secret life. Right. So next, this next... Uh, next Monday is going to be an episode dedicated to this movie, uh, called Searching. And the, uh, so we want stories of secret lives. And that's just a hint about what the movie's about. We saw it. We fucking loved it. So send us your reveals of secret lives, whether it's someone found out about yours, you found out about someone else's family members, fucking teachers, like this crazy reveal of a secret life. And just remember that, um, we want to, we basically to get your, your story read, just think of it as you have to be in the top 10. Yeah. So if you have a story where it's like, and it turned out that they were already married. My cat well, was an outdoor cat and lived with six other people. Actually, I mean, that's a good story. Fucking tell us. Like, <laughs> that sounds fun. But, but we do want like cr- the craziest, truest. Yeah story of this and put in the uh, subject line send it to my favorite murder at gmail and put uh secret life in the subject line yeah. and then whatever else you want yeah so steven can pull them easily we're yeah. very excited it's going to be really fun and uh be a part of it with yeah. us we love it uh thank you guys for sending in your emails send whatever you want as well fucking yay yay stay sexy and don't get murdered goodbye Bye-bye. elvis what cookie? <laughs> <laughs> He said, I don't know. I don't know.